Assume that someone for a moment wants to not look at the big picture. They just want to protect themselves and their families. And unless we're living in, in the woods, we're getting exposed to certain chemicals. Um, in McKay's book, he says, uses those says at one point, or, or one of your lectures, he said, flame retardant, chemicals in, flame retardant chemicals in breast tissues, PCBs, dioxins, hormone disrupting chemicals in our drinking water, neurotoxic chemicals in our paint cans. So if they're everywhere, if, if you were going to make a hierarchy or a priority of what to be the very most concerned with, then the second most, then the third most, so assuming we can't avoid it, that it's, there is things, there's, I'm drinking, I have a plastic bottle, there's carpet, I have maybe this formaldehyde, you know, dry cleaning, assume there's chemicals everywhere. What's the hierarchy of the, the most important thing, no matter what to avoid, and then the second most, and then the third most, if you could try to, as best as you can, give us a priority of this. I just talked a lot, so we'll let you start. <laughs> well, I'm going to do what every politician does, which is uh, not answer that question, but answer the question that I want to answer. <laughs> You're not uh, a politician, are you? <laughs> no, not yet. Not yet. Uh, as some of you remember from what I spoke about earlier today, there's something like 80,000 chemicals in use today and 200 have been tested t to any significant degree. So uh, there's no testing out there of, of any uh, real significance. So rather than go product by product by product or even chemical by chemical, uh, I'm just gonna deflect that question and, and speak about something that I think is maybe more important on kind of a meta level. And that is, as I mentioned earlier today, uh, the, the lack of information generally. And so w when a lot of people want to know what can they do to present, uh, protect themselves or protect their families. And I actually think uh, the, the question is bigger than that. The question is bigger about how, than how do you protect yourself or your family. The question is how do you spread th these, this thing with toxic chemicals is like the thing with climate change. Like you can be very proud of yourself for driving a Prius and it's not going to do a damn thing for the real problem. And you can live in a bubble and you can live in the Rocky Mountains. You can be an Inuit hunter in the Arctic, you can live, I mean, scientists have found synthetic petrochemicals on the top of Aconcagua, which is the highest mountain in South America, 22,000 feet high. There's no industry up there. So there is no running away from this, and, which is another way of saying there is no way to fool yourself that you can protect yourself. Now, you can either despair about that, or you can actually do what is really important, which is to talk about it and educate people beyond, in, in other words, spreading your community, spreading your circles till they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And let me, let me give you an example. So I teach at a university uh, in the state of Delaware, which is the home to a lot of very large chemical companies, primarily DuPont. Uh, DuPont has its name on many of the buildings on campus. Uh, our campus is a beautifully immaculate landscaped campus. Uh, until very <coughs> recently, they were using 2,4-D, a, a well-known herbicide on our campus. And uh, the campus likes to call itself very green, and in many ways it is, but there are many blind spots to ins even institutions that consider themselves sustainable. So the use of herbicides on an otherwise green campus seems like um, it's, it's a, there's cognitive dissonance there, right? So you can call yourself green because you recycle, but then you use herbicides. You can call yourself green, but you don't, you're still getting most of your food from institutional food deliverers. Like there are very big blind spots in, pl in individual people and also in institutions when it comes to these subjects. So my recommendation rather than go product by product is to contemplate your role in whatever institutions you're involved in, whether you're a parent, if you've got kids at school, like what's going on with the landscaping at that school? Are they using a lot of herbicides? What's going on with the food system at the institution? Where are they getting their food? Is it organic? Is it local? Where at my university, uh, students started to complain that all the food was, was being delivered by Aramark, this, this very well-known uh, conglomerate food distributor, uh, and they wanted a farmer's market on campus. So one day a farmer's market showed up on campus with, you know, lots of very kind of uh, nostalgic, you know, hay bales and things attached to it. Uh, and it turned out that the, the, the contract with Aramark dictated that even a farmer's market had to uh, be provided with food delivered by Aramark. So I live in a state where there are organic farms within two miles from campus and this food at the farmer's market was trucked up 500 miles from North Carolina because that had to be delivered by contract by this company, 
which makes no sense. It makes no sense that you can't have food delivered by local farmers, organic farmers, two miles. You could walk it down the street and deliver it to the university. So these are what, I'm, what I want to talk about are, are kind of informational blind spots that we have, both as individuals and more importantly, in the larger concentric circles of the institutions that we're involved in. And that's the way you'll actually make a difference by scaling up this opposition, this protest, this, uh, you know, declining to operate the way you normally do. So, education, of course, is number one, and that's what the Institute is all about, the Hippocrates Health Institute, because, you know, we're, we're so bombarded with so much um, negative information that it's really hard to find out, you know, what is true, because there's very few truth tellers in media, and, uh, you know, to, to even bring a child up and, and your family to, to bring them up as a organic plant-based family should be one, the first thing that you can do because more than anything of the world's uh, pollution comes from rearing animals, all the factories of animals that we have. So th to me that should be the first thing. The 80,000 or so chemicals that are in use presently are, is just the tip of the iceberg because when you mix one chemical with another or a third or a fifth, they make other chemicals that we didn't even intend to make. And we're not even looking at the 80,000. Can you imagine? We don't even know what the other hundreds and hundreds of thousands or millions of chemicals are. So this symbiotic chemical nightmare that's going on is unfathomable. It's almost monstrous when you think about it. So let's go through my list. The things that in fact touch you the closest should be what you should avoid and eliminate first. One of the most brilliant books written on this subject was by the top toxicologist in the world from University of Chicago, Dr. Epstein. And it's called Toxic Beauty. If you want a very sobering portrayal of what perfumes and makeup and colognes and toiletries have in it. Uh, after you read that book, if you're a conspiracy type of a guy, you're absolutely going to think there's a conspiracy going on. It's almost they go out of their way to put insane things into these cosmetics and perfumes and toiletries. Uh, it's the worst thing you can possibly put in there, they're putting in there. Then after we stop putting the rubby-dubby stuff on and the shampoos, even most health stores, the shampoos they're selling are carcinogens. And I'll repeat that, most of the health food shampoos are, no less, you know, the mainstream ones that are known carcinogens. And they have dyes, blue dyes, red dyes, etc. in them. Uh, let's go to clothing. And the most important piece of clothing that you have to consider is undergarments. So if you look at our book, Killer Clothes, we actually point out, and this is the second time I'm talking about this in the conference, that if you wear polyester and nylon bras long enough, and God forbid you un wear underwiring because you want to prop up large bosoms, you're going to have six to eight to nine times more breast cancer than if you wear no bra at all, which by the way, bras are a fairly new invention, and I'm sure women did not invent bras. No sane woman would want to do that to herself. But we've convinced you that you know, these perky, nice-looking bosoms are nice, and so you go along with the program on that one. Uh, or organic, go for the organic bras. This is a passion of Anna Maria's. And then start wearing natural fiber clothes. If I can do it, you can do it. We can buy natural fiber clothing. And women have a much easier time if you need dress clothing to find organic varieties. But if you're fairly wealthy, a man can do that too, or do what I do. You know, buy linens that are 100%, you know, cottons and things of that, and make sure they don't say no ironing on it. Because no ironing means it's chemically saturated. Formaldehyde is all over there, plus others. As Anna Marie pointed out, thousands of different chemicals are used. 
Then we look at where you're spending most of your time. I assume most of your time is either spent at your workplace or in your bed. Isn't that true? Now let's hope your workplace isn't in your bed. That's a joke. <laughs> then you're really in trouble. <laughs> but think about the mattress that you're in. Think about the sheets and the covering on it. Are they polyester? Are they nylon? Because they're outgassing. They're outgassing. There was a study done that we utilized for killer clothes that shocked me. They took a polyester garment, washed it 1,000 times, and kept it for 25 years, and it was only outgassing 3 to 4% less than it was when it was made. And there were higher points, by the way. The degradation through washing broke it down, and there were higher points where it was actually putting more chemicals out as it aged. So be very cautious about this. Then look at your flooring. Are you having carpeting on your floor? Well, almost all carpeting, unless it's natural fiber that's a throw rug or you're incredibly wealthy again, you know, this becomes an elitist thing quite often, and you can buy 100% wool carpeting, you pretty much have formaldehyde being outgassed with plastic. Do you know a lot of the carpeting today is made out of recycled bottles with PVA coming out of it? And the outdoor carpeting, I think, is almost 100%. They're proud to say it's recycled now. So, you know, what, what happens on a hot day when you have, you know, make-believe carpeting outside and you're sitting in the sun for two hours and the sun's hitting that and it's outgassing? What well, you just alluded to, uh, in my book, Killer Fish, I was told by the top scientist, there's pharmaceutical drugs every place on the planet Earth. We haven't even discussed that. In our magazine three years ago, I reported right here from Florida, the west coast of Florida, that small whales and large sharks were beaching themselves. So everyone thought, must be sonar from the Navy. And when they did autopsies on the sharks, they found Prozac. At such a high level, the sharks became goofy and grounded themselves. They thought they were heading into the ocean, they were actually heading on land and committed suicide because they were on Prozac. That doesn't break down for thousands and thousands of years, seemingly. So, you know, this is, is, is a big, 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 big subject we're talking about. How about the paint you put on? Do you realize that at your largest hardware stores now, they have no fume paints that put very little chemistry out? It's not perfect, it's still chemistry. When I was growing up, they had lead in the paint. So our little brain cells were dying everywhere we were. Every bit of, of paint had lead in it. When you look at Roundup, Roundup is one of the most evil chemicals out there in our planet today. And pesticides. Look in France where they are a little bit more together than we happen to be here in the United States, that they don't depend upon the government to do everything. Here, if we find out that the bees are dying, we go and petition and march in Washington. But the French farmers who, by the way, they make their living by having bees that pollinate crops, and without the bees there's no crops, they got money together, did research, and discovered it was a particular pesticide that came out of Germany. They went to their parliament in France and said, we'll give you three days to pass a bill to outlaw that pesticide. And they didn't do it. So they came back a month later with hundreds of tractors paralyzed downtown Paris and said, now we're going to give you three hours. Either the law is passed or we're going to call every other farmer and they're going to drive in and we're going to paralyze the other major cities in France. So what you've just said, I completely concur with. This isn't about the 60s yelling and screaming. This is about proactive participation. And money is what it's about. Why the evil empire is winning is because they like money. The way you stop the evil empire, you cut off the money. You stop taking food that's not organic and even better local. You stop wearing clothes that are made out of plastic. You stop taking chemicals in your life and you demand through your pocketbook what you're buying. That's your real vote, what you're buying. And that's how things are going to change.
Pardon? Uh, the best if you live in a place like Florida where it's warm is tiles and the more natural the tire, tile the better and of course up north it would be wood but be very cautious we're not talking about laminate we're talking about real wood and there's wood that you can buy that's not treated and there's many companies that call themselves green today that are not green but they're real green companies that have been around before it's a fad and you may want to look at what they would suggest. There's organizations that know a lot more than I'll ever know about this. Uh, that one is Healthy Homes, as an example. But there's a plethora of different experts in this field now.